and welcome to tutorial 15, which is the sixth tutorial for Core 3 trigonometry for the Edexcel course. Looking at the specification, we've done everything in green, but now we're introducing arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan, which are the inverse trigonometric functions. Let's introduce the inverse trigonometric functions arc sine x, arc cos x, and arc tan x. Suppose we had sine x is equal to a half and I asked you to solve for x. Well what you could do is you could take the inverse sine of both sides and you would get that x is the inverse sine of a half. Now the other way of writing this is x is arc sine of a half. Inverse sine and arc sine are the same. Okay that's how you would do it and you would plug it into your calculator calculator, work it out, and you would have found your x, your angle. Now, say instead now, I'm asking you to evaluate something like uh, arc sine of, let's say, root 3 over 2. I want you to work that out for me. Now, that's the same thing that's equivalent to finding an x such that sine x would give you root 3 over 2. It's the same thing. And we could find that because what we could do is we have knowledge of our sine x graph. And our sine x graph looks something like that. Okay. And where is sine x equal to root 3 over 2? Well, it's at 60. And it's going to be also at 120. And it's even going to be over here at uh, minus 240 and over here at three, negative 300. So there are the values for x that's going to give you root 3 over 2. Okay, so the equivalent of evaluating arc sine of root 3 over 2 is asking yourself sine of what angle gives you root 3 over 2. And that's the idea of the inverse trig functions, but we're going to have to tighten it up a bit for the function to be an inverse. Now, by that I mean the following. Let's remember back to our chapter 4 and inverse functions. Now, an inverse function maps the original function, uh, it, an inverse function takes the range of the original function and maps it back to the original domain. Okay, now the key point here was an inverse function can only exist for one-to-one -one functions. That's because when I have a one-to-one, -one, I map uniquely to a member of the range. And there can be a function that goes backwards because it would be a one-to-one -one mapping back. Now, although many-to-one is a function forwards, here I've got many x's going to 1y, many to 1. There can't be an inverse function because the inverse mapping would end up mapping one thing to many and one to many can never be a function. So you can only have an inverse function if you have a one to one function. That's very important. Second thing to remember is when you draw inverse functions. If this is your original function here, f of x, then f to the minus 1 of x, or inverse uh, of f of x, is always a reflection of the original function in the line y equals x, always. So for this point here, if this is the coordinates x, y in your original function, um, over here, the reflection here would be y, x. It would just swap the roles of x and y. And so your inverse functions are always reflections of each other in the line y equals x. Two very important things, and we're going to use that when we're defining the inverse uh, sine, cos, and tan functions and drawing their graphs. So, let's first of all try and draw the graph of inverse sine or arc sine. Now, currently, this is the graph of y is sine x. This is currently a many to one function because, for example, these two values give you the same y output. It's many to one. So I can't have an inverse for a many to one function. I can only have inverses if the function is one to one. So what I could do is I could restrict the function between pi by two and minus pi by two. In that particular domain, 
here, just follow it along here. In that particular domain, we take all values of the sine function between minus 1 and 1, and we are 1 to 1. So I could have an inverse of this function, and the inverse of this function would be a reflection of it in the line y equals x. Now if I could just about manage to draw that, it would be a reflection of it in the line y equals x, and it would end up looking something like this. Quite tricky to draw, but that's how it would look. The key coordinates. Now on the original graph, here's our original graph in blue. I'm going to mark on the key coordinates. This coordinate here is pi by 2, 1. Okay, and this point here is minus pi by 2, minus 1. So on our new graph here, this, this coordinate here is that reflected, so it swaps the roles of x and y. It's 1 pi by 2, and this point here swaps the roles of x and y. It's minus 1, minus pi by 2. And what other key points could we put in here? Um, th th that's sufficient here. So that, that here just tells us the following. It tells us the following about the inverse uh, arc sine function. Let's just write out specifically what it tells us. It tells us that what x values can you put in the arc sine function? So if you have a function, um, if you have the function y equals arc sine of x, what x's can you put in? Well, you can put x anything between 1 and minus 1. So your x's must be between 1 and minus 1. That's your domain. And what about your range? Your arc sine can take any value between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So your uh, range even, arc sine x, must be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. OK, and that is your inverse uh, arc sine function. OK, and I'm going to go on to the arc cos function now. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to try and draw an arc cos function by looking at the cos function. It's currently many to 1. We need to restrict it so it's 1 to 1 easiest way of restricting it is between 0 and pi because over this particular range here you can see that it is 1 to 1 and it takes all values between 1 and minus 1 so we've got the whole range of values of the cos function we want to reflect it in the line y equals x now the line y equals x looks something like this and we want to reflect it in the line y equals x. So just firstly, let's mark off key points here. This is pi 0. And this over here is going to be at 0 pi. So 0, 1 even. My apologies. So that's going to be 0, 1. And that's going to be pi minus 1. My fault. Sorry, pi minus 1. OK. So... This point here, 0, 1, is going to be reflected to 1, 0. So you're going to have 1, 0 as a key point here. This point here is pi minus 1. So you're going to get minus 1 pi coming into play. Minus 1 and pi up is going to be where that point gets reflected to. And we're going to somehow uh, draw between these two, and it should look something like that. Should look something like that. Okay, where they both meet on the line y equals x. Here. Okay, now what can you tell us about the arc sine, uh, arc cos function even? That's arc cos x. Well, let's write down what we know. What x's can we put in? So if we have the function y equals arc cos x, what x's are we allowed to put in? Well, we can put any x 
between minus 1 and 1, so x can be between 1 and minus 1, that's the domain. What y values can arc cos take? Well, arc cos takes any value between pi and 0. So arc cos must be between pi and 0. So that's our range of that particular function. So there we go, we've got the inverse trig function of arc cos as well. And the last one we had better do is arc tan. So first of all, let's draw the tan function as follows. Uh, it's many to one currently, so we need to restrict it to be one to one. Easiest restriction is between pi minus pi by two and pi by two. Here it's a one to one function. Okay, and we want to reflect it in the line y equals x. So we want to reflect it in the line that looks something like that, and it would end up, this here is asymptote into pi by two. So this here would asymptote to pi by two. Just drawing that a bit wrong here. Looks something like this, pi by two, looks something like that. And that's asymptote to minus pi by two. So this would asymptote to minus pi by two over here. So this would be y equals arc tan x. And let's tell what uh, some important things about the function. If we had our function y equals arc tan x, what x's are we allowed to put in? Well, x can go from any negative to any positive. x is simply a member of the reals. Its domain is all the real numbers. And what values can arctan take? Well, arctan of x, it can take any value. This here is going to be uh, pi by 2 because it's, a ref it's the reflection. It asymptotes to the same as this. And this here would be minus pi by 2. So arctan is between pi by 2, its y values are between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. Now those three graphs you should be aware of and you should be able to draw. You should then be able to state what the range of numbers you can put into the arc uh, sine, arc cos, arctan functions and you should be able to state what the range of those particular functions should be. Just to finish off with then, um, we should be able to evaluate arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan uh, using our knowledge of these functions and their various restrictions. Now, I always find it easiest to think like this. If we had to evaluate these, I'm going to say the thing I'm trying to evaluate is equal to x. And I'd say the equivalent statement to saying the inverse sine of this number is an angle is the same thing as saying the sine of that angle would give me negative root 2 over 2. But the key thing about when I'm dealing with uh, arc sine here, when I'm dealing with arc sine, I know with arc sine my range, let's go back to it, arc sine must be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. My answer must be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So if this is x, okay, my x then must be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 when I work it out. Okay, so I think of it easier to think sine of what number gives me root, uh, negative root 2 over 2. So I draw myself an axis like this. Sine looks something like this. Okay, and we're doing it in radians. When do I get uh, root 2 over 2 firstly? I get root 2 over 2 at pi by 4. So by symmetry, I get negative root 2 over 2 at minus pi by 4. Do I get it anywhere else within the range minus pi by 2 and pi by 2? No, because that's here to here. That must be the answer then for x. x must be pi by 4. It's the only answer within the range that gives me the answer minus pi by 2. So this is equal to minus pi by 4. Arc cos of minus 1, I'm going to call that x and say that's equivalent to asking the question, cos of x gives me minus 1, what x does that for me? Cos of what angle gives me minus 1? The thing about the arc cos function, you know that arc cos must be between uh, pi and 0. So my x here must be between pi and 0, because x is equal to arc cos. Okay, so I'm going to draw out uh, another a sketch of cos graph here, and I know it's between 0 and pi, so the cos graph looks something like this. 
The question is, what x value gives me minus 1? Well, clearly, it's the one here at pi. I get minus 1. So this here, arc cos of minus 1 must be pi. Cos of what uh, degrees, cos of what uh, angle at radians gives me minus 1? It's pi. And lastly, arc, arc tan of root 3, well, I'm going to call that x. And I'm going to say this is equivalent to asking the question, uh, tan of x is root 3, what x, so that when I take the tan of it, gives me root 3. Okay, and I know that with my arctan function, if I remember how my arctan function looked like, it fell between the following range, x, arctan, fell between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So I'm looking for an x number between those uh, values. So, quick sketch of uh, the tan graph. The tan graph looks like this. So minus pi by 2 and pi by 2. Where do I get root 3? Well, I get root 3. I should know this at pi by 3. So this must equal pi over 3. x, in this case, must equal pi over 3. And I'm done. Last example. Evaluate without a calculator the following cosec of arc sine to the minus 1. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in stages. I'm going to let x equal arc sine to the minus 1. And I'm going to say this is equivalent, trying to find x here is equivalent to finding the x that solves that equation. But as I know, arc sine is strictly between. Uh, minus pi by 2 and pi by 2, so x, my arc sine, must be between pi by 2 and minus pi by 2 when I find it. It's a quick drawing of the graph here to see what the sine graph looks like. Sine graph looks like so. Uh, when do I get minus uh, 1 when I'm between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2? The only place I get it is at negative pi by 2. Okay, so therefore my x must be negative pi by 2, i.e. my arc sine minus 1 is negative pi by 2. So therefore cosec, I'm trying to work out cosec of negative pi by 2. Now cosec is 1 over cos, so this is 1 over, sorry, cosec is 1 over sine, so that's 1 over sine minus pi by 2. I know from my graph that sine of minus pi by 2 is minus 1, so this is 1 over minus 1, which is equal to minus 1. And hence, without a calculator, I've worked out that complicated function. And that's all I'm going to talk about in this particular video. The key thing is, it, it does get quite technical, but the key thing here is, are you able to draw the arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan graphs? And you should be able to, because to do it, you draw the sine graph, and you restrict it so it's one to one, you reflect it in the line y's x. For the arc cos, you restrict it um, and you uh, reflect it in line y cos x, and the same for the arc tan. So they're the key things you need to be able to do. And just then to finish with a few consolidation exercises from the book, um, I would suggest you do the following. Uh, you read chapter 6, page 98 to 101, look at the examples, and you do exercise E, page 101 or. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful in revision.